Hey guys, I'm finally back with my first video in the Camilla series, starting with her axe. I used a lot of different materials and a lot of new skills, so let's get right into it. I started out by sketching out a basic shape of the axe head itself. Keep glancing back and forth from the reference photo and what you're drawing because this is a really weird, strange design. The key to a successful cosplay is accuracy and a lot of that accuracy falls into proportions. As you can see when I finished up my first pattern, it was a little too long so I actually folded the pattern itself to make it a little bit shorter and then it looked a lot more accurate. the decals right onto my actual pattern just to get an idea of that it was looking accurate. You could definitely do this later, but I thought that I could visualize that end product better if I just threw those details in there, so this was just like a quick little sketch. To start fabricating the blade, I cut off only the blade section of my pattern. So if you think about the blade itself as a piece of paper, what we basically want to do is have two copies of that so um, it can jut out and make that three-dimensional object. An important thing to do when you're cutting this out is cutting it on a bevel. If you've never cut anything on a bevel before, that just means basically a deep angle. There are two types of bevels we're going to use for this project, and the one we want to focus on is the bottom bevel. On the outer half of the blade, we want to make sure we're cutting it on a bottom bevel. In order to cut a bevel, you need a sharp box cutter. By either angling your blade inwards towards your outline or away from the outline will decide which direction your bevel is going. To do a bottom bevel, you need to angle your blade pointing inwards towards the outline. Basically the goal here is to have both pieces meet up with as little foam in between them as possible. If you cut the foam on its own and don't do any sort of bevel, it's just going to be two thick pieces of foam just sitting next to each other. We want there to be as little interruption in between those two sides as possible so it looks like a thin blade. So not only the bevel, but I sanded and I used a shaver tool to make that edge as thin as possible so when I glued it together it would look like a point, it wouldn't just look like wide. Once I was happy with how thin each edge of the blade was, I glued both sides together with hot glue. two copies of the base of the axe and then two copies of the back head of the axe. onto the blade itself, again using hot glue. So in order to hide the gap between both sides of the axe head, I taped off each side with masking tape and then I made a pattern from there exactly to the outer edge. That way I could hide it with craft foam and make it look a lot more clean and as, as if it was just built with metal that way. And I'm fantastic and I like just didn't film this apparently. So um, I basically just cut out that pattern itself, 
and then out of two millimeter of craft foam, cut it out and glued it directly on with hot glue. I also used the same technique to cover up the sections on the back of the axe head. Then to make the 3D rectangular base that's gonna hold each side of the axe, I made a two piece pattern which allowed each piece to lock in with each other. In this clip here, I have it done in the exact same foam that I used for the base of the axe itself, but that actually ended up being too bulky and it wasn't gluing together as flat as I liked it to, so I switched to 6mm foam, so just see what works for you, that's what worked for me. You also want to cut each of those on a bevel as well, an inward bevel. So um, they can lay together really flat because the thickness of the foam itself will just make it look like two blocks sitting next to each other. You want it to look like it has like a seamless edge. I realized there was more dimension than I originally had thought in the back part of the axe. I cut off the top section so that when I glued it back together at a bevel, then it looked like a separate little segment. Then I started to pattern out the decals that are gonna go on the base of the axe itself. So these little decal pieces, they have a zigzag trim in it, and I definitely didn't want to paint that zigzag in. I wanted it to have actual dimension, so in order to do that, you have to try and fail a lot of things. Basically, this is what I ended up having working, having work, in, work have, having work, in. You're going to draw your pattern out of 2mm craft foam, trace everything out, including the zigzags. Then, this is a foam trick. You can cut about halfway down into the foam that you're using and just kind of perforate the foam, then hit it with a heat gun and you'll see the foam itself start to expand. So the zigzag that you had cut into the foam will expand and it'll look like an actual engravement. So now you have the fun part of making all these little tiny sections with weird shapes that I personally couldn't figure out how to do in foam, so I turned, or in EVA foam I should say. So I turned to a brand new thing to me, this is the first time I ever used insulation foam. So insulation foam is that pink, carvable, almost styrofoam-like foam. You can get it at like Home Depot in like a small sheet. I basically ended up carving these sections out of insulation foam. So the thickness that it comes in I think is around like an inch and a half. It's, a, it's about that thick. You need it to be able to fit all the way around the PVC pipe and have this dimension and all that. So basically I took two sections of these sheets and I glued them together. You can't use like hot glue or anything else because this stuff melts, like you can't even use contact cement. So I used spray adhesive, which is like the devil, but like it was all that worked. So I glued two sections together. I made sure that those two sections were thick enough so that it, would, it could fit all the way around the PVC pipe and not be too thin to where it would break. For the more curved sections, I just drew on the actual insulation foam where those curves needed to be and I just slowly took my time and like scraped away those sections. For the smaller sections in between the large curved sections, I'm gonna show pictures because the way that I can explain, like there's no word for this, okay? I took the curved sections that I had already finished and I traced around them about a half an inch all the way around. So that way I would know that it would be a smaller section that would jut out and it would be 
wider than those curved sections already were. So I cut that out in the insulation foam. I cut the actual insulation foam in half in order to make it thinner. And you can see at the end of this clip that it isn't perfectly even flat yet, but there's just a lot of sanding, a lot of patience, a lot of time in order to make sure that looks flat. So I didn't show me making all of them, but you get the idea of the process. After you use the insulation foam, you need to seal it with something. I used wood glue. So wood glue is something a lot of cosplayers use to seal like their armor or if they use warbler. I ended up doing about four coats of wood glue on every single section and make sure you have them separate still at this point. Now we have to put a hole directly in the center of it so it can fit perfectly on your PVC pipe. In order to do this, I just had this metal like knife sharpener. So I ended up just directly in the center pushing a hole through it initially to get it started. And then I took my PVC pipe that I would be using for the actual axe handle and I traced the outline of it onto the exact center of each piece. Then you're going to want to get a respirator and a Dremel tool to sand away the remaining sections of where the PVC pipe will be fitting. After I was done putting holes into each of the pieces, I sealed the inside with wood glue again. Then the sections that were supposed to remain together, I used contact cement and glued them together. And then any gaps that were in between or just not perfectly aligned, then I just filled that in with more wood glue, which just filled and sealed the gaps very nicely. I have no clip of attaching the front and the back of the axe to the rectangular section in the middle. I just measured and I cut a section out of each side of the rectangular part and then I used a combination of contact cement and hot glue to make sure that it was really secure in there. Then once you cut your PVC pipe to your desired length, you can go ahead and glue on the bottom decals and then slide down um, the actual base of the axe itself onto some hot glue. I also went ahead and I attached the emblem decal onto the center of each side of the axe. For that, I just used contact cement and then I sealed all of the edges with wood glue. I found the tapering off that blended directly into the axe handle itself a little too difficult to do with the insulation foam. So I decided to make the thin section in the middle out of insulation foam and then build off of there with epoxy sculpt. So this is what I ended up having. 
And then I did a similar thing with the bottom two sections. I tried and failed many times to make those bottom pieces out of the insulation foam. It just was not working for me. So I did a similar thing with making the thin elongated sections out of insulation foam. I also used only epoxy sculpt for the decal at the very top of the axe. Just to prove to you how strong it is, I accidentally lifted my axe up too high in the basement and I like may or may not have like put a dent in like the ceiling because like the epoxy sculpt was like so strong that it um, you know, broke the ceiling. So like, don't tell my dad. I started by sealing everything with Plasti Dip. I probably did about four or five coats. Then I used a coat of silver spray paint. Make sure you let it dry between sides, that way you're not flipping it around too soon and it would put dings in the paint. All right, now the axe is looking a little too pretty and shiny, so we gotta scuff it up a little bit. So to do weathering, here I have a clip of my boyfriend starting it for me, put a horrifying amount of black paint on, and then using a paper towel immediately, like don't leave it there, immediately scuff it into the axe itself and it will catch in between all of those little pieces and all those little specks and dots and it looks so much more realistic as like a piece of metal when it has like that weathering to it. So you can just see here the differences that it makes. And that just about wraps it up. I'm really happy with how this came out. It was definitely a challenging project and let me know how it's going for you guys. I will definitely have more parts upcoming in the Camilla series, so stay tuned. Let me know maybe which video you wanna see next because I have clips for everything. I just don't really know which one to do next. I was thinking either the corset, the gauntlets, or the hip claws because those are all just like, <sighs> this cosplay, man. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.